Welcome to a lesson on a test of a single variance using the chi-square distribution. A test of a single variance assumes that the underlying distribution is normal. The null and alternative hypotheses are stated in terms of the population variance or the population standard deviation. The test statistic is chi-square, which is equal to the product of n minus one and the sample variance divided by the population variance. And you may think of S, the sample standard deviation, as the random variable in this test. The number of degrees of freedom is equal to n minus one, where n is the sample size, and a test of a single variance may be right-tailed, left-tailed, or two-tailed. So let's take a look at an example. With individual lines at its various windows, a post office finds that the standard deviation for normally distributed waiting times for customers on Friday afternoon is 7.2 minutes. The post office experiments with a single main waiting line and finds that for a random sample of 25 customers, the waiting times for customers have a standard deviation of 3.5 minutes. With a significance level of 5%, test the claim that a single line causes lower variation among waiting times or shorter waiting times for customers. Let's first state the given information. The population standard deviation is 7.2 minutes. The sample size n is equal to 25. The sample standard deviation is 3.5 minutes, and alpha is equal to 0.05. And now let's work on stating the null and alternative hypotheses. Since the claim is that a single line causes less variation, this is a test of a single variance, and we will use the population variance for the null and alternative hypothesis. Again, because the claim is a single line causes less variation, the alternative hypothesis is the population variance is less than the square of 7.2. Notice how we are squaring 7.2 here because we are given sigma equals 7.2. So if we square sigma, we must also square 7.2. And then it follows a null hypothesis is the population variance equals the square of 7.2. The next step is to work up. The distribution for this test is a chi-square distribution with 24 degrees of freedom because the degrees of freedom are equal to n minus one which in this case is 25 minus one, which is equal to 24. Also notice how because the alternative hypothesis is the population variance is less than the square of 7.2, this is a left tail test. Next, we need to calculate chi-square and then the p-value. Using the formula for chi-square, we substitute 25 for n, the square of 3.5 for the sample variance, and the square of 7.2 for the population variance. Let's go ahead and verify this quotient on the calculator. Notice how we do get approximately 5.67 for chi-square. Also notice how I did put parentheses around the numerator. And since chi-square is approximately 5.67, the p-value is equal to the probability that chi-square is less than or equal to 5.67. And now we will determine the p-value using the T84 and the chi-square CDF function. To do this, we press second vars for the distribution menu, option eight. Now we enter the lower bound comma, the upper bound comma, the degrees of freedom. Again, because we have a left tilt test, the lower bound is zero comma, the upper bound 5.67 comma, the degrees of freedom are 24 comma 24, close parenthesis and enter. Notice how we have E negative five here on the right, which indicates a scientific notation. The p-value is approximately 4.2 times 10 to the power of negative five. Let's go ahead and write that down. If we wanna convert this to decimal notation, we need to move the decimal five places to the left, which would give us 0 0.000042 which we can see matches the p-value shown below. The next step is to compare alpha and the p-value to determine whether we reject the null hypothesis or do not reject the null hypothesis. Notice how the p-value is low compared to alpha. When the p-value is low, the null must go, or more formally, because the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, or because alpha is greater than or equal to the p-value, we reject the null hypothesis. So if we reject the null hypothesis, we do not think that the variation in waiting times is 7.2 minutes. We think the variation in waiting time is less. So our final conclusion, because alpha is equal to 0.05, at a 5% level of significance from the data, 
there is sufficient evidence to conclude that a single line causes a lower variation among the waiting times, or with a single line, the customer waiting times vary less than 7.2 minutes. I hope you found this helpful.